and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Gruel Ilharg on our ro Rotation Proof Monday. This is what I'm doing each Monday here in August with rotation happening at the end of next month. The thing that I've been asked the most about is for rotation proof decks. And so that's what we're making here. Um, all four decks that, that I made here for today are going to be rotation proof. And then same with each Monday here for this month. Um, you may notice there's one. I'm just making one exception to this, and that is Land War Elves. This card is too good not to be playing, and it's just a common. And if you're on Arena, you just get four common wild cards. Just just craft your Land War Elves and just put them in your deck. It's just not. It's I know it's I know like people don't want to like craft like you know uncommons, rares, mythics, all that kind of stuff. Things that are rotating. Like we're our mana base is is worse than it should be because yeah, like we're not going to be playing Rootbound Crag, uh, for example. You know, like we're not playing any. I'm. This is the only thing that I'm making an exception for. It's just a common. Now, if if you really don't want to craft land of War Elves, which you should, you should just have it on your account for historic and everything. Just just get land of War Elves on your account. It's it's a good card. You'll want it. But if for some reason, um, uh, you really really don't want to play land of War Elves, then the thing to do is to put a for this deck. The thing to do is to put a twenty fifth land in the deck. Um, I guess like another forest probably or another mountain actually probably another mountain um, but I would just put in a 25th land in the deck and I would play three incubation druids so that's what I would do I would I would um, and you know like incubation druids are rares but uh, I guess not basic land but there we go I would I would play three incubation druid and a and a mountain um, over the land of War elves but the land of War elves are just better and they're commons just get them <laughs> so there we go um besides that all right now talking about the rest of the deck all right so we have um uh we have some i guess i didn't really talk about how to do it in the sacrifice the orzo of sacrifice deck but oh well um also if you just want to make other upgrades to the deck i guess i could kind of talk about that um Definitely, like, replacing Rugged... Like, the main things are just replacing Rugged Highlands with uh, Rootbound Crags. If you have Rootbound Crags, just, you know, go ahead and replace those. And the other thing is the deck should be playing uh, Blood Suns in the sideboard because of the Scape Shift matchup and how popular that is. Probably over um, some number of Cinder Vines and Flame Sweeps um, and the Shifting Ceratops. Like, these are, like, the, the probably the worst cards in the sideboard. Um, but Cinder Vines can be, still be really good against Nexus, which you can run into from time to time. So that's we're going with the Cinder Vines there. And I basically had the Flame Sweeps as something against the uh, Scape Shift deck. Besides that, you know, like we're, we are an Ilharg deck. You know, like we have big creatures here. Ilharg, Nullhide, Gruel Spellbreaker, and a whole slew of other ones. And then we got like these little Planeswalkers. Like Domri and Kiora are both awesome um, at three mana that they both... Uh, add mana for you like to be able to help you get to your five drops like you're we're trying to skip from three to five most of the time and i'm making the exception to play domri chaos bringer even though we're a null hide deck and because of the like not domri basically does everything we want this deck to do that plus one giving our creature riot gives it haste is awesome with ilhark you know, giving ilhark haste is just incredible so Love that plus one ability, and it you know adds mana and helps ramp us to those big things. And then the minus three can get us the card advantage that we need if um, we're running out of spells. Um, so I think it's worth it to play the Domries because of how impactful both of those are. Now the weird part about the deck are these four five these four other five drops. I have one Skargan Hellkite, one Cavalier of Flame, one God Eternal Ronus, and one Cavalier of Thorns. All four of these cards, like they're all. Mythics, yeah. So they're all five mana mythics that are all just very good creatures. And they're going to be better uh, in certain situations um, than, you know, like, Skargan Hellkite's going to be better, like, like whenever your opponent's, like, gummed up the ground than, like, Cavalier of Thorns will be, for example. Or, um, you know, maybe you need to, like, do a little bit ramping with the Cavalier of Thorns that you put in with the Ilharg. And it's, you know, a really good blocker and everything like that. Like, it'll be better. Like, basically, all those cards are better in different situations. 
Um, so if if you have uh, if you have a real preference, I know so maybe maybe you don't like um, you know, like one of those four, or maybe you don't like two of them, and you want to play two each of two of the other ones. You can, you know, like so. Basically, those four slots are are flexible. You can kind of ha- have them however you want. Plus, when we play these games here, maybe one of those five drops like really outshines another one, and maybe we want two and and cut one. But I just wanted to try out all four, but that uh, for this video here. But that's a flex. Like those are like flex slots that you can kind of play whatever you want there. Um, if you have, if you're not worried about making your deck rotation proof. Um, Rekindling Phoenix is awesome uh, and definitely worthy of a couple of those slots too. So that's another card to be thinking about. But Rekindling Phoenix is rotating out, so we're not playing it. Um, Shifting Ceratops is another one that could be, could uh, you, you can main, de- main deck Ceratops if you want. Instead of some of these five drops, you can play a couple Ceratops too. Uh, basically, big, rare, and mythic creatures that are awesome, that it, uh, are power four or greater with Kiora. That's what you want. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, with, uh, a, a Boreal Grazer, just, just the thing about a Boreal Grazer, I never recommend playing a Boreal Grazer unless you're playing t- at least 26 lands. I think 26 is like the minimum to play a Boreal Grazer, um, because getting, like, a Boreal Grazer only ramps you if you can continue to hit land drops. Once you stop hitting land drops, that ramp doesn't matter anymore. And that's, that's kind of just something about magic, is a lot of times your best ramp spell is just hitting your land drop. Um, so I think, I think 26 is like the minimum number of lands to be playing a Boreal Grazer. And so a deck like this just doesn't really want it. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the game. So with these rotation proof decks, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing over in the traditional constructed queue and we're going to be, uh, spending our thousand gold, seeing if we can get to five wins even though we're only using half of the format, except for Land World. We got three wins with the Orzhov Sacrifice deck, so a good start to the day. Oh, I forgot to put the star up for what deck we're playing. Star. A Boreal Grazer also gets worse. It's... It's a it's a lot better game one when you're gold fishing and trying to just do your thing as best as possible. But it it's it's a card that um, even if you're playing it, it's a it's a good card to be sideboarding out some at least some numbers of in games two and three of of matchups like where there's more interaction on both sides. Uh, having an an O three is usually a good card to be sideboarding out in those scenarios also. Okay, we'll see if our opponent can find the paths to victory. Green Kitty. Vampires. Am I supposed to coil that thing, or am I supposed to play Spellbreaker? Probably just play Spellbreaker. Um, but yeah, like, your your really big mana decks, like Hydroid Crisis, Manipulation, that kind of stuff, like, that's where you could fit in a Boreal Grazers. Pretty easily later on, but I'm not sure... And this kind of deck would want it. Please don't kill my Paradise Druid or my Ilharg. Hmm. It is good to see well, those things being three toughness each is annoying for Hellkite. I could... Ah, uh, <laughs> see, this is already costing us. If this was Rootbound Crag, we we get to coil this thing and we get to activate Hellkite after we attack with Ilharg, put in Hellkite, activate Hellkite, kill the other one. I 
and they just take 15 and go down to one. <clears throat> Thankfully, it didn't matter. Our opponent conceded, so it was all good. All right. Removal, shock, coil, sweep. Okay, against Vampires. Hmm. Should probably cut a couple of these five drops. Probably, but maybe not. Cavalier Flames is a really good damage card. It's a good aggressive card. I'm not sure about it as good defensively. I guess it still is a 6-5. Six 6-5 five. Six is pretty big. I don't know. Maybe I'm just doing too much sideboarding, honestly. Yeah. Let's not play Flame Sweeps. Play Coil Shock. Hmm. We'll take out one Ravager Worm and one Kiora. Yeah, Marauding Raptor is that's it. That's a good suggestion for over instead of Incubation Druid. Uh, thought about that one too. Basically, Marauding Raptor does make your creatures cost you know how it makes your creatures cost one less. It it basically can be it's like a mana creature. But it's not quite as good as a mana creature because it doesn't help cast your planeswalkers. Uh, and it does do the two damage to all your stuff whenever you're putting it into play. So, like, even like Ilharg puts a creature into play and that creature takes two damage off the Marauding Raptor. Maybe that makes the opponent able to block and trade with that creature when they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, I think I'd rather just have the Incub. And. And it's always just going to be a 2-3. And it's not going to be bigger than a 2-3 because we're not really playing dinos. Um, where the Incubation Druid can turn into a 3-5. You can even put like Incubation Druid into play off of Ilharg and, and adapt it that turn. Yeah, Nullhide's still fine even with the, the non-creature spells. Board it in. Yeah, Nullhide's still good. I kind of want to play Domri and Lanwar Elf instead of Paradise Druid and Lanwar Elf. No accord, no peace. I was raised by wolves, though they might have also just been big dogs. I wouldn't mind if my opponent's attacking the Domri. That's all right, Fairmount. Save six life at least. Oh, 
Looks like you're all mouth and no hands. Hey, nice. All right, well, that's probably game. So I guess I'm going to have to have Landwehr Elf chump Knight of the Ebon Legion. Alright, too slow. I feel like Ravager Worm's awesome. I'm gonna put that back in. I wouldn't mind being able to play Veil of Summers to counter their removal spells. I mean, this is basically God's Willing plus draw a card which is pretty insane um, I was kind of skeptical of like these kind of removal spells Let's keep it, keep it here. See how it goes. Who? I mean, like last game, we never drew a third land. If we're not drawing a third land here, we're not doing anything. Gosh, just one land. All right, land off the top. There we go. Blue. Should have just the lava coil, not the Ravager Worm. Come and destroy. Wish I had Ravager Worm still. Poor one toughness creatures. Can't get over. Can't block. Can't uh, fight. Can't get past these little one one vampires. I'm starting to get miffed now. There we go. I'm sorry. Were you doing something? Uh. 
I don't know what this season's reward style is, but I, I think it has something to do with... Um, I think it has something to do with Agent of Treachery, because Agent of Treachery is like the... Can't finish the job. The card style on Agent of Treachery says it's a it's a reward. I don't know if it's this month or some future month or something. They can only punish you if they catch you. I wish I would have killed these before the first four flipped, but if I let Domri die, then I'm not really trading with those. So we'll just trade with them now. They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> so yeah, my guess would be that. Agent of Treachery is the Platinum one. That'd be my guess. But I don't know. We stand together. See in yourself what I see in you. Well, games two and three here, we didn't play... We haven't played a single card that costs more than three mana in games two or three. And that is not a good... Not a good formula for us to win. Expect me to tuck my tail between my legs. Last game we had a bunch of them. And couldn't cast them because we didn't have any mana. This game we didn't have any. Alright, 0 and 1. I haven't seen Simic flash around in a in a long time. I, that's a deck I don't play against very much these days. Okay, come on, green kitty. All right, we have four lands, three spells. I'm just keeping my hand. It's not perfect, but we're keeping. After, it's better than the last two <laughs> that we played. Yeah, Ors of Sacrifice will be up on YouTube shortly. It's loading right now. Um, probably about 15, 20 minutes. Looks like Scape Shift. What this land world is gonna do? We'll just play it. Nature flows with vigor. Looks like a pretty awesome start for our opponent. That was their turn three, ending with five lands. Right on schedule. Trust me, I have a plan. Day for Savannah. 
Busting heads is my bread and butter. Got it. I wish we could give the null hide uh, trample. That doesn't give trample. Crazy beast. Pretty. They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> you should really quit before you get your teeth kicked in. The ocean surges, life thrives. I just I just have to pressure them because I know they have like the the ramp spells and everything they can you know they could instant speed scape shift make a just a ton of zombies all that kind of stuff but I I'm not even attacking Teferi I think that like with these seven power attackers we have to just try to take them out as fast as we can Let's try this But we dodged a bullet there no scape shift last turn I want a minus Domery. Now. I'm talking about the other Domri to, to fill my hand. I'm talking about this this Domri to look. I mean, I could I could tick up so like yeah, basically I could tick up this Domri and, and give this another riot, but I want to see what I draw off of Kiora here. We'll destroy the field of the dead. Did it? Did it target Memorial to Genius? I am not. I don't want to destroy Memorial to Genius. Why did it target that? I should have added a mana with the Lanor Elf. Whoops, should have added a mana with the Lanor Elf. Well, well, what do we have here? Let's get moving. They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> Suppose that's how it was meant. All right, at least the fairies out of here. Yeah, it would be nice to destroy the field of the dead. Oh, it's not an activated ability. Oh, that's right. It it doesn't just destroy lands. Sorry, it only has activated ability lands. Oh, right. That's why it didn't let me target. Right, right, right. Yeah, y'all are right. Okay, so. Forgot about that whole part of the card. It's been a little while since I played Ravager Worm. <laughs> it's been a little while. All right, my B, my B. Um, I don't want a minus three again. 
I guess I'm. Yeah, I guess we're just ticking up here. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. They have four two twos, so this eats one, makes it three. Let's just do a counter. Oh right. No! Everything's just going wrong. <laughs> I wanted to fight something. I like it just it just kinda lagged a little bit and it just clicked over. Ugh. Yeah, it would have been nice to have one of those other tutus out of here. Alright, can we not draw lands? That was their last card. Should just be lethal. Should be. Yeah. It's like twenty one of these. Not deal with 21 zombies. <laughs> Once I missed Lethal, because I wanted to say nice game after a girl spellbreaker and you gave it the 1 1 instead of haste and then lost it. No, that's too bad. So, yeah, we're. We're not playing what we should in this matchup. You know, we should have all the Blood Suns, but we don't have Blood Suns. And therefore, this is going to be tough. I don't think Cinder Vines is really going to help us too much. Warboss is just so, so bad against zombies, but if, if they don't have zombies, Warboss can actually do some stuff. It's just so bad against the zombies. Cavalier Flame and Cavalier Thorns kind of like work really well together with Cavalier Thorns putting lands in the graveyard, then Flame dying and triggering that. Yeah, Cinder Vines is in this sideboard is for Nexus. Uh, you can also play it against uh, decks that have a bunch of enchantment removal, which can be this matchup. But it's mostly just for Nexus. Yeah, our deck is, is competitive. Yeah. 
We're probably going to go 0-2 here against the, the two best decks in the format. There's no real shame in that. And we're not... You know, we are... We do have constraints to our deck here. We're playing a rotation-proof deck where I'm not playing Blood Suns, which I... This deck needs Blood Suns to, you know, to be able to to win this matchup, and we don't have Blood Suns, and therefore I'm probably going to lose this matchup. You must be mad to That's just how me. magic is. So this isn't like the most optimal list that we're playing that we could have. Um, I guess Fall of the Thran could be okay against Cape Shift. I suppose. And destroy. There we go. We didn't get to see that animation last time. No, Land of War Elves is rotating, but like I've explained many times, it's just it's only a common and it's just way too good just put land where elves in your deck even though it's rotating just it's a common just just craft them that's the one exception i'm making is just land where elf that's it's too good not to not to play so if we play this we have one two three four and we don't get to play these other things so 14 He's my bread and butter. <clears throat> right, I forgot about the, the plus one with Cavalier Flame when I was looking at math. Forgot about that part, but I guess that was enough damage to kill them. <laughs> I guess they were dead. Cavalier Flame's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, like there's times Red Cavalier can just mess people up, for sure. Ravager Worm is just is a just an awesome removal spell. It's just a really good card. It, you know, usually you're just killing stuff with it, and it's just a really good card. Yeah, I I like all the Cavaliers too. That was a really good cycle. I like the Cavalier cycle. I think the gr the green one could be a little bit smaller. It doesn't need to be a five six. It's kind of obnoxious that six point toughness. I wouldn't mind if, uh, you know, Cavalier, the green Cavalier only had five toughness, Nissa and Tamiya only ticked up to five, not tick up to six. I wouldn't mind that at all. I feel like the six point on all three of those cards is a little obnoxious. I think all those could be five.
You call it <laughs> You're gonna hurt when this is through. Crisis is a good one. So we're getting this Domri out here. Help ramp us to Ravage a Worm next turn to be able to eat Krasis. Thanks, Cosma. I am not going to sit this one out. Here we go. Well, this is the really dumb thing about the Scape Shift deck is you just can't interact with and I'm just playing Teferi and then instant speed scape shift on your end step now and you can't play instance. So if they have that, we just lose, I suppose. Ooh, no escape shift. Don't worry, I got this. Okay, no escape shift. That's good for us. Where's our mana at? We make Ravager Worm a 6-7. Doesn't kill the 7-7, seven, seven, though. If we had the Domri in play also, we would be able to. Hmm. to seeing you running away. Oh, I wish you could see your face when I've beaten you. You should really quit before you get your teeth kicked in. So just trying to increase my mana here this turn. It's not it's not the best that I can be doing. I mean, it is the best I can be doing, but I'll protect you. I'm not finished with you. Not by a long shot. Hey, Gardner. GG's. Four, five, six, seven, to make a splash. I need to draw a land here. Come on. Darn. Yep. That's why I needed to draw a land. Because they're doing this now, so I would be, would be able to flame sweep. We had one more mana, but we just bricked on both our draw steps. 
But I think this is still the play to like try to force them to scape shift of like putting the lethal on Teferi and or like, you know, entice them into doing it. Not really force them, but entice them into doing it. I would have just drawn a land. It doesn't mean like that we would win, but we would stay alive. Remember last game when we just had five lands in hand were our only our only cards? Ooh, what did we get in our pack? You get a mythic? Nope. Got a rare. Yeah, if I just play Ronus, I don't think that incentivizes my opponents to attack with, or to, to escape shift. I, I mean, I could have played Ronus and then played it safe, then I have flame sweep and then see if they escape shift. But again, if they just wait till end step and just escape shift on end step, then I don't get to flame sweep. But I guess, I guess if I Ronus, I guess if the Teferi is dead, then I do get to flame sweep. So if I guess if I just Ronus, Kind of wastes the waste the Ronus though, but it's it was the safer play. Um, yeah, I got twenty gems because I have all the rares, and so instead of getting a fifth copy of a rare that I already have four copies of, then just just get gems. Um, so all right, our our Gruul Ilharg deck went O two, but. I mean, that's just a really small sample. We played the two best decks in the format. We played against Vampires and um, Scape Shift. Two matchups that, you know, are, are going to be tough to beat with the uh, card selections that we're taking here. Um, you know, not playing... Uh, you know, obviously with the Rugged Highlands makes it rough. Whoops. Oh, I'll, I'll cancel that. But, you know, we just don't have Blood Suns in here. That Scape Shift deck is really, really good. And... I, it's going to be tough for this deck to beat Scape Shift too much, basically. Um, and the Vampire deck is, is pretty good, too. Like, those Vampires are, are really strong. And it's, it's basically what I'm saying here is it's no shame losing those two matchups. Uh, you know, you don't have to just be like, oh, man, this, this deck went 0-2. This deck's terrible. It's not. It's, is it worse than the two best decks in the format? Yes. The thing is, is like, red... Besides, like, Blood Sun, of course, for um, for the Scape Shift deck, Red doesn't have, like, a lot of great cyborg cards, especially against the Vampire deck. Like, you can't really kill a Danto Vanguard. These these removal spells of, like, Lava Coil Shock, like, there's just not really good options to be playing against Vampires in, in Green-Red. Uh, there's not. Um, if, if you know something that, like, if you're playing something in Green-Red that's really good against Vampires, let me know. Um... Because, yeah, I can certainly replace, like, the Shocks and the Lava Coils. Like, Vampires is definitely the best. It's the aggro deck that's really popular. It's really good. It's the one that we need different sideboard stuff. Um, and, yeah, like, Scape Shift, both, both those decks, Scape Shift and Vampires, have tons of key cards rotating out also. So, like, like those are those are decks that are not going to be nearly as strong. Or, basically, they'll, just go, they'll go away after rotation. Where, you know, if you're building this deck for post-rotation... You're not going to need to worry about those decks. Like they're they're both going to they're losing way too much. Like both those cards or both those decks, um, you know, won't really be a thing. Um, so there we go. Gruul Ilharg, pretty cool little monster deck. You want to build a, a sweet stompy deck uh, for uh, rotation standard. Give this one a try. All right. Um, so that's Gruel Ilharg. I uh, hope you listened to the beginning of the the, the deck also. But um, don't forget, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'd appreciate both of those. But thanks so much for watching Gruel Ilharg, and I will see you for the next video.